Boruto episode 41, Strength in Unity. Now this episode, of course, is the conclusion to Team 7's first mission ever. And honestly, um, I thought this was a pretty good episode, especially the fight sequences. Honestly, watching some of the fights, um, they just genuinely made me smile. Like I thought, like the ones I used for my thumbnail, both those scenes I thought were great action sequences because for one, uh, Konohamaru just had like a really awesome moment. We got to see, you know, it, it, technically i would say this was like his first really cool moment in the series like we got to see him when he was first at the school it's like oh you know this is what's happening if you do summoning jutsu and you have the contracts and it's like okay we got to see that he went with toads probably you know falling in line with naruto it's like all right well that, yeah that's pretty cool i like that but this was like legitimately in combat how is he going to get out of this situation what is going on here like he knew things could be a bit more difficult so of course he has some sort of idea or some sort of plan i thought we were going to see him kind of use um the shadow clones we find out that you know he was kind of talking to the guy to kind of stall him just to see you know what extra information he could get out of him just in case and it ended up being he didn't even need to do that he just straight up formed a rising gun and he did it with one hand which is probably my favorite part about it. it was like okay he's trained enough to actually do you know the rising the rising gun with one hand and i just thought that was cool because the only person we did you know there's only a couple people that we actually see do the rising gun in general in the series and you know, just like Naruto, he had to learn how to do it. So we see him, there's like an old filler episode. I think I mentioned this before, but there's an old filler episode where Konohamaru does exactly what Naruto does, where he makes a shadow clone to help him make, you know, a Rasengan. And it was just a cool moment. And in this episode, it's like, oh, he's reached the point of, I say, you know, like with Jiraiya and stuff like that, where Jiraiya and Kakashi, where, you know, he can just do it with one hand. And obviously, you know, Naruto after a certain point. And I was like, well, that just seems really cool. Like he's gotten that training. He's learn that skill from such a young age you know following after naruto and then you know now doing it himself and it was just a cool moment and he like blows away like this cursed clone thing and just the way they did the art for it, where he's talking is like you know you thought leaf shinobi were weak and it's like the glow of the rising gun and stuff over his face and i was like excuse me that's a super epic moment this is the first time we get to see this adult version of konamaru and he's doing um you know just like a, a classic move from the series and that's kind of like his thing as well like obviously once again he followed after naruto um i did wish we got to see him do the shadow clones a little more because he did utilize that a lot uh just like naruto did like he did learn that from him and that's why his moveset is, you know is fairly similar um but i feel like the reason they took that away was because of the fact that boruto you know uses the shadow clone jutsu just like naruto does so it's like all right i can kind of understand that they may not have wanted to have you know, like obviously that was Naruto's thing and Konohamaru kind of followed after him and he would do, uh, typically his thing was that he would only do two, like from what I can recall, maybe he would have, you know, like, or one clone, it was two of him, maybe sometimes there'd be three of him, sometimes, but I feel like his main thing was that he would always make one shadow clone and that was how he would do the rising gun and that was pretty much it, it was like one shadow clone and that's how he fought, which I th still think they could have utilized if they wanted to, um, but I understand because it's like, all right, you know, Naruto did that and now obviously Boruto does that a lot, so you know, maybe not have Konohamaru utilize that technique as much anymore, unless it's like a, you know, dire situation, just have him, uh, get trapped, and then he, he just goes with the, uh, Rasengan, but I thought that was a great moment, I thought it was a really cool sequence, and he scared the guy so bad, he basically just crapped his pants and passed out, which I thought was hilarious, but I love that scene, I was like, that is super awesome, and he, like, you know, we see how much power he actually has behind it, because he wasn't even near that rock, like, he basically just shot off the Rasengan and just let it go, almost like a Rasen Shuriken a little, but he just let it go behind the guy, or, you know, past his head, and it just destroyed all the rocks behind him, and I was like, well, that was just a cool moment, and he didn't even, you know, really take the guy down, he could have destroyed him, but he didn't, and he, he let it go, and I thought it was super cool, and they, they talk about, um, the uh, the wind nature wind chakra nature which I thought that was interesting once again kind of following uh <laughs> following in line with Naruto where he has wind style jutsu um yeah you know, kind of kind of the same thing uh, with Konohamaru where when he formed it he kind of used the wind to get rid of uh the clone that was wrapped around his hand and I thought that was cool it's like and that's um a, sort of a unique way to do it as well where he's able to in a sense, he uses that chakra nature to actually form the spiral. Because I was like, that looks a little different than just the ball forming. Because the last time I remember seeing that, like, it's just forming, was when, um, it was in Shippuden, when Kakashi was trying to teach Naruto about the chakra nature. And that's when we found out, you know, Kakashi's so freaking insane. Like, not only can he do Chidori, but he's just like, yeah, check it out. I can do Rising on in my other hand, too. So, and I remember when that first happened, it was just like, boom, 
got it, Rosin got it. It was like nothing had to be done. He just made it happen. And it was, you know, using wind chakra in this case. And I just thought, that's a cool way to do it. Like, he didn't need to make a shadow clone because he uses the chakra nature to, you know, form the spiral. And I was like, that's such a cool concept. It's, it's super simple, but also the way they visually did it, they clearly, like, kind of upped the animation for the this sequence as well as the next one. But it just looked really good. And I was like, this is just an awesome scene. It's a doll clone Hamaru. It was just a really badass moment for his character. So that made me happy. I love that sequence. Of course, we have the kids, and they, they naturally have to have their fight. They have to, you know, utilize their teamwork. That's been, like, the whole point of this mission is, like, you know, Boruto, you got to work with the rest of your team. Like, they have to overcome each other's weaknesses and things like that and become each other's strengths. And I love the way they handled that in this episode where Boruto, you know, he's learning a little bit more about himself. He's realizing, like, oh, this, you know, the, this young girl who is now the head of the village, she's the head of the village because her father died, and her whole thing is that she wants to kind of deal with everything on her own just to figure it all out and that's exactly what boruto likes to do so he sees that in himself and it's like wow i need to really work for my team in order to show her that teamwork is a thing like it was for boruto himself as well as you know this young girl so i thought that was pretty cool the way that that played out but once again really awesome sequence and you have boruto and mitsuki going in trying to you know battle this one guy and then sada's in the trees and she's you know clocking him with the shotting gun and i was like all right so basically he'd rather take a hit than dodge so that's how we got to do it and i just love that whole sequence like they both have they have both boruto and mitsuki use their um their wind style jutsu and basically instead of doing like the boruto stream where he shoots himself they both uh shoot sadara towards the guy and she uses a shotting gun and right as he's about to swing the blade into her face she dodges midair and she hits him and of course they have her do the cha thing like sakura and i was like you know, once again, it just made me smile. I was like, that was super cool. It was a, a really great sequence from all three of the characters, but I loved it the most because it was her actually, like, channeling her own mother, and she, she killed that guy. Like, he had a hole, like, his chest went in. I'm like, he's dead. Like, she killed him and destroyed the ground, and, like, we see her utilize the strength that she gained from her mother, and that's one of the things, that's why I like her um, out of, like, the three characters. Sadara is my favorite because she's the coolest character. Like, if you play, um the Ultimate Ninja Storm games, she's the coolest character because she has the shining gun. She uses, um, they, we haven't seen her do it in the show at least. Um, I don't know, you know, as far as the manga, I'm not 100% sure, but as far as the series goes, um, we haven't seen her do it, but she uses um, lightning chakra, she, you know, just like her dad. So she has the shining gun and the lightning style nature like he does. And then of course the, <coughs> excuse me, the insane strength of Sakura. So like if you play as Sakura, you know, in the Ultimate Ninja Storm games, she's really really cool like she has both their abilities combined and we got to see that a little bit minus the you know lightning nature so i was like that was super awesome we got to see her utilize the shining gun as she was kind of clocking him while boruto and mitsuki were you know trying to fight him and then she goes in to actually utilize her own strength as well and they have it where it rotates between the three characters where boruto is like you know i don't have i forgot exactly what they said it was basically like i don't have this and it would show you know solder and then she would say i don't have this and it would show uh, Mitsuki. And then it, with Mitsuki, it showed Boruto. Where he's like, you know, I don't have like the same sort of creativity. That's like the only one I remember, honestly. Um, but I thought it was really cool. I think it was like, I don't have the create the same, you know, creativity to use my techniques like you do, Boruto. And that was from Mitsuki's standpoint. And I think with um, Boruto, it was like, he doesn't have like the same skill level. Like his, his skills and like his analytics and stuff aren't at the height of her. And then she believed that she didn't have like the kind of just raw power that they had or you know and which i believe that was her that said that which technically is not true um but i just thought it was cool like in that you know obviously i could be mixed up but just that whole sequence i thought was fun and then like i said the fact that they had her channel both sasuke and sakura i thought was just great and she actually does you know like i said the cha thing and i was like that's awesome i just thought that was a really great moment and like i said she straight up murdered that guy because there's a hole like in his chest like she his chest was caved in he died so it was just a great fight sequence. Of course, everything works out perfectly. And then it's like, all right, well, we have the deed. Here it is. Um, you know, the girl goes back to her village and she apologizes. And everyone's like, hey, just come to us next time. I think you'll be an even greater leader than your father. And everything's just great. And, um, and I thought this was kind of funny. I assumed that this was on purpose. But instead of, um, like in the original series, where Naruto basically got like his own bridge from their first like giant mission, um, they have like a little Team 7 official uh, rest area in, in the village. I was like, that's kind of funny. Um, but I assumed that that was the point. It was like, oh, let's kind of make a reference to the old series where Naruto, uh, I think it's called like the Great Uzumaki Bridge or the Great Naruto Bridge. Um, so I, I just thought that was really funny. And then it's like, you know, 
Team 7 resting spot. You know, that's it. So I thought it was pretty cool, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was nice. Um, a nice conclusion to the episode. Like I said, the action sequences legitimately just made me smile because it was like Konohamaru got a super epic moment. It, visually, you know, everything looked great. And then, you know, teams, you know our new Team 7, um, everyone had their own you know, they had a moment as a team, but everyone also had individual moments. We got to see, you know, technically for Boruto and um, Mitsuki, they were kind of just fighting, but, you know, Boruto using, utilizing his shadow clones and Mitsuki utilizing, like, the wind scythe uh, jutsu, which I always think is cool. So we got to see that, and they both use their, like, you know, wind chakra to actually propel Sodoran. Of course, she's using her, her uh, shouting gun and then uh, ultimately, like, her brute strength. And they have that moment, you know, like I said, it's like as a unit, but also individual where, it's all three of them together realizing what they need to make up for or, you know, what they don't have, but also individually, it's them being like, I don't have this, but I know I can, you know, count on my partners to do it, my teammates to do it. So I love that whole element. Like, I just felt like it was a good episode, like story wise and action wise for sure. And, you know, animation, the way they did everything just looks super cool. So I, I really, really enjoyed this episode. Um, looking forward to the next one. It seems like it's going to be within the village, but they are going to a location where it's like a bank robber and stuff like that. So we'll see how that plays out. We also got like a little bit of, uh, visuals as far as some of the other characters. So we got to hear about, you know, um, she could die going on a scrappy mission and we got to hear Iwa Bay and Danky talk about pulling out like a giant turnip and stuff like that. And of course, Boruto says like, oh yeah, everybody was scared and I saved the day, but you know, it's cool. We got to see the characters for a little bit. So I'm looking forward to the next episode and how that's going to play out with them still uh, being within the village, how that might kind of affect things. Because it, you know, it seemed interesting that they were going on a mission to stop a bank robber. And it was like, okay, well, the bank robbers barricaded himself. You know, I, I kind of understand, like, it seems minimal and, you know, send, you know, the team in for training. So I am curious how that's going to escalate because naturally it has to. So I am looking forward to how that ends up playing out. Maybe we will get to see some other teams come in. But all in all, I thought this was actually a really good episode. Love the action sequences. Love the way... It was, whether it was Team 7 or just Konohamaru by itself, the cool uh, finales to those, you know, fights were definitely awesome. So I loved it all the way through. You know, story-wise, simple episode. Let's save the, you know, I guess technically she'd be like the queen of the village, so let's save the head of the village, get the deed back, beat the bad guys, and of course they do it. So simple story, but the way they did it was definitely entertaining, and I like seeing the team grow, and just the cool moment for Konohamaru was just sweet by itself. So... Really enjoyed it, of course. We'd love to know what you guys thought about this episode, so please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts about it, least favorite parts about it. And naturally, going into this next episode with you know, them going right into another mission, I want to know what you guys want to see from it, what you guys expect to see from it. Because um, immediately, I was a little shocked with the way this episode played. I felt like, you know, at least as me, I kind of felt like that was all they needed. It was like, all right, well, they figured out, especially Boruto. I can't just do this on my own. They figured out that unity, that teamwork and strength and unity for the name of the episode. So I don't know what they're going to do that it could be as good as this because I feel like it might just be like just another, maybe the action could be good, but story-wise it's like, okay, well, you know, they'll build up a little more. Maybe we'll see more calculating of the team. Maybe that'll be the, you know, the cool element for the next episode. But I am curious what they're going to do with it because it's like, oh, well, they went through the epic journey of realizing how to be a team. So maybe this will be like, that first true step where it's like here's the first full mission of them just as a great unit and who knows maybe like the whole point of the episode where it's like the bank robbery isn't even that big of a deal because it's like yeah boom we figured it out we're actually a great team now so maybe that'll be the point to see how they you know, how they feel coming off of it like man we're a super epic team maybe you know that rise in cockiness and how that might take them down when we get to you know another little story arc so maybe that's how they're gonna play it but either way I enjoyed this one. Like I said, we'd love to know what you guys thought about it. So please put your comments down in the comment section below. And of course, thanks for watching.